back. It is now episode 45. Engine is now in, as you've seen in the last episode. If you haven't seen it in the last episode and this is your first episode, go check out the previous. In fact, go check out the full playlist. Um, it's all on there of the build so far from the bare shell. Um, I know I said I'm going to start with the plumbing and wiring, but I decided to trial fit my brakes. Um, they, these are a spare set of Brembo's that I have, and these are off an Alpha GTV, I think. Um, they're the same as the Fiat Coupe Turbo calipers, so they are now trial fitted um, using a set of Jordan's brackets. Um, don't know what you can see in there, what you can't. Hang on, I'll get a torch. Right, using a set of Jordan's uh, adapter brackets to fit. Um, if you need any of those, I will link you to Jordan's channel in the top right now mm -hmm. on a card to the video that he has of fitting these. And then I think his contact details should be in his video of how to get in touch with them. So that's those on. I wanted to try and fit those so that I could see if they fitted with the wheels on. And they do, just. Um, they're quite tight, but they're in the fit. I uh, need to get the anti-roll bar on yet because there's still quite a lot of back and forth movement in that, but um, spacers wise, I don't know what to do at the front. Uh, it's not obviously sitting down level yet, but I think it should be okay. That's a 15mm spacer on there at the front. Uh, I might be fit to get away without it. If I get away without it, the wheels still fit with the brakes on, thankfully. So. Next up, I'm going to start lower this car down and we'll start talking about what I'm going to do next with the engine. Okay, now we're doing at eye level so we can see a bit better. The engine is sat in, obviously. These are only all sat on. Uh, there's no gaskets or anything on them yet. Couldn't resist setting them on for picture and also it keeps the dust off the, in the camshafts and stuff in there. I have put the main earth on from the bulkhead connector down onto the starter. And I have, hang on, put the link wire from the alternator across, P clipped it across the subframe and it goes up onto the alternator there. I've left a bit of length of blue wire onto the alternator as well. Uh, blue because it was blue in the factory loom, I don't know what it is. So I need to get that rooted into the engine loom. Um, speaking of engine loom, I think I'm going to put it in next. I'm going to take this split grommet over here that I have apart and get it fed through um, and located so that I can see where I have to cut it to put multi-plugs on um, because if you're taking the engine in and out it's a lot handier just to unplug two plugs at the back of the engine and drop the whole lot with wires and all on it instead of having to take the plenum and everything off and start trying to dislocate wrists and fingers trying to get stuff off the alternator and off the um, crankshaft pulley and all that carry on so I think I'm going to put it in next location of the wiring loom. I don't have to be too precise right now because I know it all fits on the engine side of things. I do have a few more bits and pieces that I probably should add to the wiring loom. As I've already mentioned I need this in, the main charging wire. Um, I might run it along the same route as the main battery cable from the alternator and a cable tied to it and then join it into the loom there somewhere on the multi-plug. But I'm working with it later. This is the multi-plug that I'm using, two of. Um, these will hopefully fit somewhere up in here. I don't want them too far out of the way, but on the other hand, I'm trying to keep the wiring them hidden, so I just need to work out where I'm putting them, really. Okay, so, it wasn't that clear what I was doing there. The bottom white tape there is where it comes out of the car through the programmet. 
top white tape is just to keep them all together and the blue tape is where I want the plugs to go so this is where I'm going to snip the loom um, this will just be to keep the loom from unraveling and then I can start stripping back and going from there putting these heat or these multi plugs in the, the job like that I think I might actually take home and do it in a nice warm study and uh, bring all the connectors and everything home and all the tools I need and probably do that at home at some stage and um, that's at least the location decided for that wiring there's not that much else wiring to go into the engine bay really um, I have a couple of boost pipes and stuff to go back into the car um, for the MAC valve I'm not entirely sure where it should go um, it's over here too somewhere I've never used one of these before but this is a 3 port MAC um, I'll probably put this inside the car somewhere I think if anybody has any wisdom for me on the location of this thing let me know um, I'm going to presume it's waterproofed but at the same time I'm trying to keep the engine very tidy um, yeah Okay, so with the cables ran into the car, now I need to make a decision on where I'm pointing everything. I think I can get away with running a couple of these fuse boxes up inside the glove box like so. Um, I'm going to take the glove box back out, it's only held in by a clamp. But um, basically these fuse boxes have six relays um, and six fuses in each. So. I think if the two of those are jammed in somehow at the back of the glove box and the dead space is never really used anyway um, I think I'll get away with that. The ECU I will probably mount it somewhere either strapped to the bottom of the glove box up there or on top of the glove box with cables hanging um, I could put it in the glove box as well to be fair up high up there maybe but I'll work all that out. I haven't got the glove box here with me. Um, I just need to know the location of all this carry on so I know where I'm running wires to on the inside. These are the power wires that I've left hanging off the ECU for the coil packs, injectors, and the main power of the ECU. Obviously, I'm going to have more power wires than that. Um, I have my boost valve, I have all the GoPro, the dash, um, everything <laughs> to run. Not including all the rewiring that I'm intending to do with the lights and heater and all that carry on inside. So, <laughs> this should get me away for now. I might have another fuse box somewhere in the car as well. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the location and how they've fitted. Right, so, glove box is out of the car and I have taken the lid off it. Um, I have mounted the powered fuse box, which is going to do most of the stuff up high in the glove box. The other two fuse boxes are going to go something like that. I need, they're not the right way up there, but something like that. So that I don't have to flip and take half the wire out of the car every time I want the glove box out. I'm currently debating if I can lift the lid out of this here. So that I can at some point just lift the fuse boxes up out. So instead of having to disconnect everything in the back of the box I want the glove box out for some reason so I think I'm going to take the lid off this here and just try and cut a hatch in the top uh, so that I can get access I'm going to leave enough slack on the cable here that if I was to pull the glove box down out and set it on the floor, in theory then I can just put the gloves up. 
theory, I can do this. And anything that's rattling about in the glove box can fall out the back of the glove box. Okay, sorry I couldn't talk much earlier. There was music on next door, and I can't really do that whenever it's music on because I'll get a copyright strike if I talk and music in the background. So, a bit of progress. I have cut the lid out of the glove box, as you see. It means now that I can lift those up out if I drop the glove box down off the two screws and two bolts. Um, I've cut a bit of a slot in it here that I can get the wires into the fuse box and this one here then will run out as well. This fuse box here is, as I said earlier, a powered fuse box so it takes a heavy live from the battery post on the bulkhead and it also takes an earth and then all the circuits from that are just switched from wherever they're switched from and they pass through this fuse box. Jobs are good. Um, the next stage I think is going to be to get the cable and routed roughly where I need it. If I'm going to start this wiring I think I'm going to have to do it organized. It's the only way I'm going to get through it. So I'll probably go home this evening and make up a bit of a spreadsheet of what's going where. Uh, name these fuse box one, fuse box two, fuse box three, whatever, and make a spreadsheet out of what's going where, what's going into what pin, what's going into what relay, etc. etc. At least then I have a plan and I can work my way through it. And especially in the future for fault finding, if anything goes wrong, I know exactly where to look. It helped me out doing the engine loom. I know it might seem a bit of a faff to other people, but it's the way I work, so why not? Okay, so. Honestly, it's that cold out here. I can't remember where we left off the last day, but as you can see by the amount of wiring looms lying everywhere around the shed in various locations, I am trying to work out the best way to do this wiring. got these two plugs from the engine bay simplified down to what wires I actually need and labelled up and um, it's time to get them plugged in and routed. Ideally I want most of this stuff going to each side for where it's going. Um, turn right now. <sighs> Ideally I would like most of this stuff routed each side. So for instance the passenger side indicator we want to run that side, driver side indicator is going up this copex and so on and so forth. So, for now, I think I'm going to just plug them in and we can worry about that later. It's a very poor camera angle. Mm -hmm. 
So, all of this stuff here, what have we got here? Black and white is an indicator, black and green is an indicator. And so. car now all the original wiring rather having started my own stuff um, and I will the next stage I think is to get a location for the fuse boxes so I'm gonna do a bit of work this evening in CAD and bring the glove box home and have a play with it to see what the crack is I'm gonna come and get you So, all the wiring's in. Um, you can see here, I have the top fuse box connector. There's another one over there. Um, and then I have written down what circuits and what wires went to every fuse from the other loom. So, just a matter of hopefully connecting all that stuff up. Um, there was only really four or five wires, I think. We would check. On the top side of the fuse box, which are side lights and stuff. Um, so they are yeah on the top outputs all we've got really are one two four wires so just need to find those and one of those is a reverse light switch which isn't being used and um, i'm running another one for that gray black is going to be the side light for the inside or for the rear and sorry for the front and grey red is also a side light for the front. The single speed red, I think, goes to the washer bottle. So again, it's all simple stuff to wire in on the top. I'm not too worried about missing the connectors for it. Um, I think I will let that do me for another episode. Uh, unless I find some extra footage in between at home tonight, whenever I'm doing a bit of CAD work. Um, I think that'll do me for now. The wiring... I was never giving up the other night whenever I was sitting in minus two, <laughs> freezing, trying to work out wiring. But I think this is the best possible solution without wrecking myself, wrecking my head. I was intending to rewire all that from scratch and now I see that I'm a mentalist. It's too far even for me. Um, you get all these wires all rooted where they need to go. The likes of this wire here is the starter signal wire. So it'll go out through the grommet, the seal the seals it split grommet and down onto the starter. It can be shortened and stuff as well. So you need to just try and get all the copex sorted, get all the wires shortened, rooted neatly where they need to go, cable tied up and then loom tape potentially. Um, once I have the fuse boxes in, then I can decide a location for the ECU. And um, you can see it, the lead for it still hanging here. Uh, I'm gonna take the glove box home and see about trying to squeeze it all into the glove box um, and go from there. As per usual, if you like what you're seeing, if you could hit the wee subscribe button with the bell, um, tell your friends and pop over to my social media platforms. The links for those should appear up here someplace. Um, if you really like what you're seeing and you want to contribute to the, the supporting of the channel, um, my Patreon details will appear both at the top of the screen, top right, and in the middle, hopefully, for the icon. Um, as I've said before, it takes up 
a lot of time trying to film all this carry on and trying to get it all in a manner that everybody likes it you have to pay for the music every month and obviously your cameras recording equipment your all that carry on um so if anybody does want to support the channel if you pop over to my patreon and have a wee look there's different tiers they start at 99p a month like so it's not going to break the bank and yes until the next video which will hopefully be a bit less original wiring <laughs> and a bit more fun wiring and hopefully getting stuff put into place at the ecu and all that carry on um bye